okay in this video we will try to get a fair idea about what ensemble learning is okay if you remember from my previous video we, we talked about cross different cross validation methods and also we talked about bootstrap right which is basically sampling with replacement right now those methods specifically bootstrap has a direct implementation in in ensemble learning okay so if i if i just show you the picture the mind map i have created when i, I just initially started the machine learning playlist okay so we we started with the supervised learning right so we discussed fear about the linear regression then we moved to we did not discuss the polynomial regression and rigid regression which we will be discussing very soon okay then we move to the classification part because most of the machine learning application currently if you see it over here the most of them deals with classification although there are there is a fair amount of application of regression as well but most of them are mainly the classification problem so that's why if you see there are a lot of very well established algorithm present in the in the in the classification scenarios okay now we we discussed the logistic regression first okay then we move to knn okay k nearest neighbor then we move to the decision trees right and we saw a lot of decision tree sub algorithms like how how we can divide the decision tree how we can create the decision tree using chi square information gain and and those algorithms right now there are a lot of decision tree algorithms the, like random forest and all they are basically they they are classification algorithm is fine but they are ensemble in nature that means that's why we are jumping from decision tree to ensemble learning here we will learn fully all the ensemble learning algorithms then we'll move to svm okay that that's the future stuff okay so that's why we are we are having a jump over here because if you see the random forest ada boost exe boost so these are the classification algorithm they have a they have obviously have a regression use cases as well but mostly they use as a classification scenarios okay and they are they are ensemble in nature that means if i just talk about what ensemble learning is okay so it's a process by which you you use the multiple models okay such as different classifiers or experts and then strategically generated and combined to solve a particular computational problem that means over here solving a problem you will be requiring multiple models okay that means you will be using multiple models it could be a model of similar kind of algorithms okay or it could be different algorithms as well okay now but there will be a multiple models and you will be combining their outputs to produce the final output the final prediction okay so that's the idea behind ensemble learning now in our in our daily lives also we use ensemble in different ways right for an example like if you want to go for a doctor procedure right so then you take lot of opinions from several doctors right before agreeing to a medical procedure similarly when you buy a product from amazon or or any any kind of online retail right you basically read lot of user reviews before purchasing a single item right and similar stuff when a company hire an employee it 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 checks lot of their references right so these are these are all ensemble in nature right basically we are referring lot of expert systems to gain a knowledge about a particular procedure or particular item or a particular person right that means the primary goal is to minimize the unfortunate selection of an unnecessary medical procedure or a poor product or unqualified employee right so that's the idea behind behind ensemble now if i just move to the next slide so we got like what is en ensemble methods and how we, we use it in our in our daily lives right so now which what kind of scenarios we need ensemble so there could be broadly categorized into three different reason like statistical reason computational reason and representational reason like this this could be the possible scenarios which should trigger you like to use the ensemble okay now statistical reason could be like it could be for a particular problem okay you 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 can have either either huge volume of training data or you can have very 
very little training data right the, the one of these scenarios can occur for your for your problem right so in those cases where you have a huge volume of training data or where you have very little of training data you can use ensemble like if i just talk about this this picture i, I created over here if if let's say this represents my my huge volume of data right so what generally i will do i will divide them into smaller smaller chunks of data okay and then use use separate algorithms or same algorithms right this is this our classification algorithms on those data chunks and then take a average of them or some aggregation of them to get the final final output over here okay so this could be one scenario where you you using ensemble it will improve the performance of that model right or let's say i have another reason let's say i have a very little amount of data okay so in those cases what i'll do right if you if you remember i i discussed bootstrap in my previous video right where what we are doing we basically generate the data set right from a from a particular data set using the replacement technique right so that means when we are sampling the data after taking that data sample we are giving it back to the main data set right so that that means from a very small amount of data we can create a larger volume of data by using the bootstrap method right and then use the similar technique over here on the bootstrap samples you can you can use the classifiers and then from those classifiers you will take a combined decision to to get the final final classification or final output over here right so this could be another statistical reason for for ensemble learning so let us move on let's say what are the computational reason we could have right so let's say i have i have a data something like this one we have, we have a, it's clearly visible like right? we have three different classes over here right so in in this whole slides i'm talking about in terms of classification scenarios okay now the same concept can be applied in the regression scenarios as well okay so as most of the machine learning problems are on classification so that's why i am emphasizing on that part but if anyway we can apply the same techniques on on regressions as well okay so now if you see it over here like we we have a th three different classes in our in our data now a very common question we generally face is which classifier to use over here right which 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 algorithm we have to use over here now in these cases right now this this is called a typical model selection problem okay so that means you you want to know what what will be the best suitable model or, or what will be the best suitable algorithm in this cases right now we could have possible approaches like if if let's say we we choose a classifier with the smallest error on the training data we, we have already discussed this parts in my video when i talked about the errors different kinds of errors we 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 calculate for the to measure the model performance over there right now one of the issue we faced over there is there is a lack of test data right so that means some way we either we have to calculate the error from the training data or we can use different cross validation methods which i discussed previous to previous video to do that one right now now in this approach again it's a well defined approach but the problem is still the model will not see the real world test data right so it may not be the best approach in these cases okay because because even though the training data has will be the smallest one it will not guarantee that the model will be performing based on the real world test data okay now the second approach that means let's say we we don't go with this particular approach okay now second approach is we can choose the classifier randomly now this is the i think this is not at all a recommended approach because in these cases there is always a chance we will choose the model which will always perform poorly right because of the randomness in nature okay now this could be this may not be the proper approach as well now in this type of scenario we can use ensemble okay so using an ensemble of such models okay instead of choosing just one we will combine their outputs okay and then use some kind of aggregation technique like averaging or taking the maximum okay there are a lot of averaging technique as well which we will see in future slides okay which we can use based on different different algorithms we have for ensemble we can reduce the risk for an unfortunate selection of a particular poorly performing classifier right now 
now here also ensemble may not guarantee that it will always outperform a single model selection except the scenarios where if you can choose the model very wisely where the individual models or experts exhibit some level of diversity among themselves okay to to make the ensemble effective in those cases only ensemble may be fruitful okay so this word diversity is diversity is important over here now for an example let let's let's see this one okay now over here if you see like this is this is the data set we we started with right now we can use three different classifiers over here okay where each model will do separate mistakes on separate instances right if you if you see it here the first model it misclassified these three points as a square right that's why the boundary if, this is the decision boundary okay so when we talked about classification problem it's it's always it creates a decision boundary right so if you see it over here it misclassified these three points as a, as a square over here even even this this three red points as a as a circle over here right now the second classifier if you see it corrected that problem over here on those on those three points but it it again miscalculated this three these two red points as a square okay now some it's it's did not do any mistake on the on the on the circle part over here now the third classifier it did not do any mistake on the square and the and the triangle part but it one of the single point circle it it misclassified as a, as a as a triangle over here right so this is called a diversity over here each classifier will do the mistake on separate places right so that they will combinedly learn the final one so if we just combine this this three classifiers together i just i just draw them as is over here okay and the combined model if you see it over here it makes very very less mistakes okay so this is this is the idea behind using an using an ensemble method over here okay so let's let's move on to the next slide so we talked fairly good amount of computational reason okay now let's talk about the representational reason where in this in this kind of scenario let's say a doctor is analyzing a neurological disease over here okay now for that he may need he or she may need lot of data like like this this electroencephalogram data or mri data or pt scan images right or he or she needs to know the the person's demographics data such as like age gender educational level and subject right now see, if you see it over here you cannot fit a single model for all of this data right even even though you create a vector for all of this different data and and feed it to a model try to train that model it's very unlikely that the training will be successful over here okay this is the best scenario where you should be using ensemble that means for each and every type of data you will be creating you will be using separate models and and in this cases it mostly like different kinds of classifier you have to use to to basically process this kind of data and train a model right and then take a combined decision on the final output right so that means it will be the influence of all the different models which will govern the final output over here okay so this is could be another one of the good scenario where you we should be using ensemble methods now as i already told diversity is the key like right? when using ensemble we have to keep in mind that the models different different models we are using over here then it's to make different errors on different instances then only the their strategic combinations can uh, can reduce the error over here okay otherwise ensemble may not add any value compared to the single model okay now we talked fairly bit amount about different needs for ensemble and different scenarios we should be using ensemble methods now as i told there are lot of combination and rule right like if i just show you the the diagram over here like th here we are combining the outputs of this different models right now how we are combining so there are there are a lot of combinational rules are available like if i just talk about broadly there are like algebraic combina combiners and voting based methods in algebraic combiners we have like mean rule just like taking the average sum rule weighted sum rule product rule minimum rule maximum rule median rule those kind of rules are available now it based on 
algorithms we will be using the aggregation method will be changing or the combinational rule will be changing so when we will talk about different algorithms we will talk about this combinational rule in very detail okay and the voting methods are like majority voting so this is one of the important one and the weighted majority voting we will see this these things as well in future videos okay now if i just talk about different ensemble algorithms available so if you see the first one is the bagging which we will be discussing first and this is directly related to the bootstrap i discussed in my previous video okay this is the direct implementation of bootstrap in ensemble so it is also called bootstrap aggregation method and one of the most famous algorithm we'll be discussing over there is called random forest now there are a lot of boosting algorithms like ada boost cat boost exe boost light gbm will be discussing very thoroughly all of these algorithms okay in future videos one by one and there is a, another method called stacking as well or stack generalization so which you will be seeing as well okay so hopefully you got a fair idea about what ensemble learning is now we will deep dive into all the different different algorithms from the from the next video onwards okay hopefully this video is helpful see you in next video